Hi, and welcome to the Lone Star Play podcast, where we sit, eat, chat, and repeat. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong, and we are coming to you from Austin, Texas. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for local restaurants, stores, butchers, farmers markets, and more who are using organic, fresh, artisanal, and local sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. All right, we have a very special guest today. Uh, my good friend, John Sanchez, is on. Um, I say good friend, you know, I've met him one time, but we hit it off so well. Um, and honestly, um, after talking with him today, it, it really feels like, you know, we, we just spoke. It's, it's so strange. And we sort of mentioned on the podcast, too. But um, really great guy, uh, you know, just an amazing guitarist, amazing musician, period. Uh, you know, um, just amazing here, you know, locally in Austin. He is from Louisiana, uh, but now he resides in Austin. I know he's lived all over. He, he travels all over touring as well with uh, numerous musicians. On the, you can check him out on Facebook. Um, and, you know, if you just Google him, you'll find, you know, sort of his discography and his credits of all the different people he's played with. Just countless bands, of, you know, I can't even name them all. Just so many. Um, so, you know, just you know, talk about experience in the industry. This guy, you know, has so much experience in the music industry um, and played with just so many amazing people. Um, I, I particularly know him from playing uh, guitar for Bob Schneider. That's how I originally met him. Um, and, you know, honestly, it's, um, you, you know, he does so much more than that, right? He's very dense. He's like an onion, not comparing him to anybody, but he's layered, right? So just got a lot of layers to his his credits and whatnot. Um, so, and, you know, we're just, we hung out today and, and spoke and um, talked a lot about food, to be honest with you, and, and just what's happening with, um, you know, the lockdown and the virus and all that. Uh, but we also just talked about food and, and everything that's happening um, and how he feels about it, right? And, and where he sees things um, and get his perspective on things and really just chat. Um, again, he's very, this, is, this guy's very creative, very insightful. You know, the way he sees things and looks at things, um, it, it's just very great guy to have a conversation with. You know, honestly, we we went for a long time. This is one of the longest podcasts uh, we've done on the Lone Star Plate. It might be the longest podcast we've done. Um, so not sure, um, but it's it could have gone longer. You know, that that's the truth. Um, you know, we just had such a great time and it just such a really good uh, conversation about a lot of different things. So, um, you know, you're, you're going to really enjoy it, kind of get an insight into how he, he thinks about things, too, and what he's doing creatively during this time and expanding and, you know, getting into painting. And, you know, when someone is that creative and then they decide to do something else creative that they've never done, it's like they'll blow you away because they'll do it so well and then be like, well, I don't know. I just did that. And you just look at it like, oh my God, it's amazing. And they've never really don't have much experience with it. Right. But if you're just a creative person, you can apply it to other sort of creative avenues. Not always, but a lot of times um, that's okay. This is one of these guys. He's just such a creative person. He even, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're just listening, you won't get to see it. Uh, he'll, he'll describe, he describes what it is, but you'll get to see sort of his layout in his living room of all the different, you know, instruments and everything he's got laid out and what he's doing, you know, during the day and on lockdown and all this. And just, you know, it's great. Uh, it's fantastic. So anyway, check out the interview. It's really great. Uh, had a great time with them. Uh, John Sanchez, hope you really enjoy it. And um, thanks so much for uh, tuning in. Bam. I'm sorry about that, dude. I'm sorry I had to download some I mean, damn app. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> I need to because this is the, how it's going to be in the next. <laughs> yeah. How it's going to be in the, in, the, in the future. That's right, man. You're going to be zooming. It's going to become a verb, right? A verb. Just what are you doing? I'm zooming later. I can't believe I haven't. Uh, you know, I've had people ask me to zoom. And I've been like, I kind of enjoy the isolation. And they're like, hey, at three o'clock, will you join a Zoom meeting with eight people that are fans of blah, blah, you know, artist number, you know, artist X. And I'm like, 
No. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, forget it. I mean, no offense, but like, I kind of been getting into the solitude, man. It's it's a trip, isn't it? It really is uh, kind of crazy, right? To be honest with you, um, totally. W- when it started, it was like, well, how long is this going to last, right? Am I just going to be a couple weeks? So you just kind of like, well, how far? how far in mentally do I go to this? Right. So you just kind of stayed on the surface of things like at any moment we could get back in. And then once I realized I'm going to be at home for a while, it became okay. No pants party. Right. Just like constantly, <laughs> just a constant, no pants party. Oh, fuck, who the fuck I got to impress. I mean, I'm not even going to ask, but I, I, <laughs> I'll let you know. I might be wearing pants and I might not. <laughs> <laughs> we like we like the mystery. Well, guess we'll find we'll find out if you gotta adjust a light bulb or something up there in a minute. Right, right or feet <laughs> cat or something. Yeah. yeah. Cool, man. How are you how are you doing? I'm doing great, brother. You doing okay, man? You you um you've been traveling a lot since since last we've we've spoke. It's been yeah, a while. I have, man. I've been to a lot of places. Um Mostly like over the summer and uh, fall and winter, you know, pretty much all year. <laughs> yeah, like all year. You know, I actually totaled uh, how much time I'd spent in Europe last year. And I spent almost two solid months wow. of my life of last year in Europe. And, you know, some of it was like, you know, a week in Manchester, you know, or a solid, you know, a solid month over here or... Uh, you know, just different tours. And uh, I mean, no complaints. I fucking love traveling so much. But uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, man. I, t- I tabulated it all the other day and, and it was like two months of my life. That's just a lot. Months of my life. Yeah. yeah Interesting that's a lot. places to, you know, like uh, a lot of Eastern Europe. You know, Christabel's very popular in Eastern Europe. And which fascinates me because it's it's a part of the world that uh you know not a lot of people pick for their vacations or whatever so sure yeah and uh you know three or four days of that was in uh russia which where i had my birthday i had my birthday in russia that was real true that's pretty cool yeah, yeah that is a trip it was fun man some some friends uh took us to a restaurant uh like a typical it's the Russian version of going to like a uh, Texas chili parlor, maybe. Okay. You know, so it's all like vodka and, uh, you know, uh, Russian things and Russian culture and Russian food, you know, it's very. Do they do like a birthday cake with candles for, for birthdays there too? Is that like a <laughs> curious? Um, no, they didn't do that. And it was a lot of. Uh... Shots of vodka, like a shot drink. I mean, that that was everywhere and then like uh plates of like beef tribe and and pickled fish and you know bread and just all kinds of wild stuff yeah, a lot of a lot of pickled food right uh in, in, in yeah for sure um that seems to be a lot of europe i think um just stuff that's <laughs> sort of carried over from food sustainability right being able to keep food for a long period of time pickle yeah. it yeah, having to having to yeah, keep your food supply going, you know, through a winter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, through a winter. Yeah, exactly. And this just sort of stays, even though they have technology to get you past it. Yeah, you just keep doing it. Tradition, uh, you know, just kind of how it is. Um, yeah. Well, when I lived in Europe, um, that a lot of canning canned foods, you know, and and it's not looked down upon it just because, especially in Spain, they have one of the best canning operations in the world. I mean, you you get canned food there, it's delicious it's not like the shit we serve here it's yeah. like actually fresh good like really good stuff yeah it, which sounds weird to say fresh canned food but that's what they do they get it fresh they can it and you eat it within a short amount of time oh, yeah. you know no it makes sense it makes sense it's like it's like uh yeah, pickling or you know yeah some jars like exactly that's pretty yeah. much what it was what what sort of like food you know, adventures did, did you have over in Europe? Was there any one dish you were like, you know, I don't know, just some, anything? There's, yeah, I mean, I can think of a couple of things that really knocked me out. Um, 
uh, I'll, in, in Russia, they have this soup called solyanka. And it's right. like, a, it's like a tomato-y, kind of spicy. And it's just got every kind of meat you can imagine thrown in. So to me, it was very similar to gumbo. Okay. It, it even kind of tastes like gumbo. I swear to God. So <laughs> yeah, I like it. I've had that a couple of times. Uh, I've had that a couple of times in, in Germany. Uh, Cause you know, it kind of stuck around after the war and uh, it's, it's become like a big Eastern uh, you know, the Eastern part of Germany, they still serve it everywhere. And I, I just fell in love with it. So I had some of the real stuff in, in Moscow. Oh, that is super cool, man. Yeah, you went to Moscow. That's crazy. I, I, I just don't see where my life was going to take me to Russia one day. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. So I'm going to have to live vicariously through other people. I never imagined myself doing it either. Um, there is one other kind of food that I really I, I, I want to I tell you about because um, I've never experienced it. And it was just fantastic. It's something they do down uh, in uh, Kosovo. And uh, it's like this kind of, like you can order entrees, uh, you know, and they've got vegetables and they've got stews and they've got lamb and this and that, you know, different, different styles of it. But whatever you order at this one particular place, it comes in this real traditional, uh, it's like a, a crock pot stew where, uh, kind of like a fajita plate, you know, it's like you order what you want and they bring you out a, a little crock pot that's been uh, cooked in a, you know, uh, baked in a brick oven. And it didn't matter what you got. This stuff was phenomenal. It was so good. It's like this real earthy, thick, uh, just different stews, man. Just great. Yeah. That, that seems to be something that a lot of cultures have, right? They have their own stew, their own whatever, because it's just such an easy thing to make, right? For the whole family, leftover stuff. You just bring it all together. You let it sit. And now I can go do this over here, you know, in the house or whatever. And they end up being some of the best meals because they pick up all the flavor and they slow cook. And it's just so dense, right? Layers of flavor. And, and yeah, man, I love a good stew. I don't know how long it, I don't know how old it was, but this, it tasted like this had been cooking all night. It was yeah. Oh, that's the kind, you know, it's just, yeah, like you're saying, this was like a lot of dark, uh, kind of like gravy, and and it was real uh, uh, savory, and and I think the best one was like this lamb with this really kind of dark eggplant they get over there. Oh, interesting. It was killer, man. And you know, it's like the Mediterranean. I, I love uh, the history of Medi, not the history, but the different kinds of food they have in the Mediterranean because oh yeah, it's just all going back and forth and it's similar but it's got a little local flavor and and this definitely fit in that that uh you know just it was real cool yeah. yeah that's where they get right the mediterranean diet like because it's you get a little bit of everything right you get a little it's about basically about freshness and about balance you know it's about yeah. you know, eating, not eating steak every day and you're not eating chicken every day. it's about uh, you know, a little red meat, a little fish, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, that, that's, that was my favorite thing about living on the Mediterranean was, was getting that aspect of it. Dude, I can't imagine. I mean, you you told me a little bit the last time, but you know, that just, that must've been a great experience. I would, absolutely. It's the food, dude. I'm all about when I travel, it's about the food. Yeah. My whole my whole plan of any uh -huh. is all based around food. What's happening today? Where are we eating? And then right. I will base everything on that. I mean, literally, I don't care about monuments and, and museums, <laughs> and I, I I don't care. So I'm trying to find out from locals and whatever where the best place to get this, and then go on some crazy adventure to get there in some back alley. You know, totally. I'm, that's I'm yeah. all about that. You That's gotta go about. to the market in the morning and get yeah, those exactly. olives that come from that one little hilltop. <laughs> yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, way is how olives and olive oil are just every meal, and you know over here, yes. you know you get a handful of olives at Central Market, and it's like six bucks. Totally, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's like 
a punch bowl full of olives for breakfast and like oh yeah we'll keep them coming if you if you really want to eat that many I mean, <laughs> yeah. actors to them or saltines just like okay yeah you like them huh yeah i guess they're pretty good we we're kind of used to them <laughs> totally that's a that's a great point though um it's way more I guess just the demand of it, or I don't know what it is, but yeah, we would drink olive oil like it was water in Spain. I mean, it was like we fried in it. We cooked. I mean, it was just like olive oil. I mean, it was like, that's it. There is no other. Why would you use something else? And it was just so, you know, like uh, different places I live, but I remember this one uh, couple roommates that I have in particular they came from a small town outside of Granada and their folks owned an olive farm. So they would bring so much olive oil due to the house and olives. It was insane dog. I mean, they came in with like literally gasoline cans full of, I'm not joking. It was like, Jesus (laughs) Christ, like this olive oil. I mean, I found them bathing in it one day, just in the tub, just like, (laughs) you know, with some rosemary in there too, for aromatics, you know, like, damn dog, are we going to reuse that? Or what's the deal? Uh, but yeah, it's just so much olive oil. It's just, yeah, you know, it's so, so readily available. Yeah. I'm curious. Does, does the mic sound good? Yeah. My mic? Yeah. Sounds okay. Yeah, okay. I, I tried to hook up a decent mic and I started running into a bunch of, <laughs> sorry. I should have done this last night, but the musician that can't get the mic go. And no, I'm joking. I'm uh, joking. No, you're, this sounds uh, great. Actually, I think the setup you did is much better for people to do than trying to set something up. Well, like I have this set up because it stays like this, right? I got the whole studio set up, whatever, you know. So I, I wouldn't ask that for anybody. Like y- you sound fine. I promise it sounds fine. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, man, that olive oil. And, you know, we've all, we, for years, it's been, don't, you know, olive oil, you know, stay away from fats. You know, they're not very healthy. But man, like you're saying, they, they drink it. Yeah, I, olive oil is good for you, man. I, I would over butter, over although I love butter. Mm-hmm. Um, olive oil is a great substitute, and I don't think you can. I don't think you can have too much olive oil in your system. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just from that belief. Um, and there's different types of olive oil. Okay, sure. you can, you can get different levels and different um, versions of it. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, extra virgin is the best. Um, evo but it's also can be the most expensive you know you can also get like unfiltered olive oil um can be good for like cooking Mm -hmm. and you can get like evo for like salads or fresh olive oil you put over like tomatoes you know like if you're going to eat the olive oil like directly you, you want something like that and then they have like frying oil or whatever yeah man so and in Spain, they're really big on uh, curing cured meats. Oh yeah, jamón serrano, right? That's like and all that. Yeah, I've only been to Spain, you know, just for a little tiny window, but yeah, you know, yeah, curing meats is a a great way to you know you just taste meat in a different way. Honestly, that's how they were eating meat long before they were cooking it. To be honest with you. So cure, curing, eating meat like that was the way meat was eaten. So, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's just something about it. And it's the process of doing it. I mean, I could do a whole podcast about it. Um, you know, jamón serrano is probably, God, it could be my single most favorite thing to put in my mouth. No joke. It's <laughs> like a, a slice of jamón serrano right off of the leg, fresh uh-huh. cut, just melts in your mouth. I mean, it has, I used to have one in my kitchen. So we just, you walk in and slice a couple and just oh, dude. go about dude, your day. Making me pretty hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this podcast is for. You know, John, this is funny because the last time you came on um, where I was just a pat down, doing my own thing. And now I have this podcast, The Lone Star Plate. So yeah. we, talk, we talk about food, right? Because food is, that's my industry. Um, as much as I love music and, um, you know, played music myself at a younger whatever my career became food you know my, my yeah. career became that um so yeah it's now what's great is i get to talk with food with people that may normally not get to talk about food but they have a passion for food right like everyone especially nowadays has a, 
an opinion about food and they have something about it, right? In some way or another, it's involved in their lives. So that's, that's actually what I like about this new podcast is, is bringing someone like yourself who always talks about music, right? Any interviews you're going to do, you're going to talk about music, you're going to talk about the, so, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that, but also kind of cool to talk about something else that, you know, oh. you have a passion for, you know what I mean? And kind of even how they compare how the food and music scenes, honestly, man, they, they there's a lot of connections there. It's really interesting because kind of like music now where any kind of music you can imagine is a button touch away. Yeah. Uh, really any kind of food you want to try is, is pretty damn available these days. That's true. You know, especially in Austin, right? Oh, it's such a foodie town. I mean, man, if, if you want Korean, I mean, you can pick from 10 different places. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You know, whatever food you can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great, right? It, didn't you notice that in Europe that it's not like that in Europe? It's, no. it's like the food there is what you get. There's very few other things. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They're so regionalized. Exactly. That's, I mean, not to get political, but that's one of the sad things about globalization is it all just gets thrown into a big pit where there's no distinguishing. There's no accent anymore. There's no local dialect, you know, like, uh, you know, coming from South Louisiana, you know, there's a certain way of talking, a certain way of eating and, and a certain way of living life. And I recognize where it came from when I'm over there, you know, that kind of like real laid back cafe culture where, you know, okay, we've worked all day, but now for two hours, maybe three hours, you know, we're going to talk and we're going to eat some really good food. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, but getting back to that, uh, the regionality of like, uh, you know, e e even the beer and the cheese and things like that, you know, yeah. It changes, uh, it seems to change like every 10 or 20 miles, you know? It should be that way. Totally. It, that's, how, that's how it should be. I was just on a, an interview before this, and we were talking about that, like, that that's where we need to go back in America is to that sort of aspect, to the local aspect. You know, when you drive up to wherever you're driving to, you're getting the food from there. You're getting the stuff from there. Now, not to say there shouldn't be foods from other regions. Of course, that's what makes America great and the food scene great. You know, in Austin, like you said, you want Korean, you want Vietnamese, you want African, you want Somalian, you want there. It, it's here. There's an option. And that's great. And that shouldn't change, um, yeah. you know, but at the same time, we need that local food as well. The local um, you know, just using local ingredients, even to make that food. Let's say I have like my Spanish place, right. That I used to have, I used local ingredients to make that food. And that's, that's where we need to get to, you know, it, that, that's what I hope we, we continue to do. Um, we, we need to do it a little bit better now. Um, yeah. this whole lockdown and, and virus and everything obviously is changing, uh, both of our industries dramatically. Um, you know, the, the restaurant industry, of course, it's all over the news, right? That the restaurants are suffering and this and that. But I think that something that doesn't get talked about a lot is the music industry is suffering, man. Right. I mean, it's, I don't know how, what do you think about what, what's your take on, on this with, with the music industry? Oh, God, well, it seems like for the first time, uh, that I can remember there is not a music industry. And so, wow. People, yeah, that's, right. that's crazy to say. Totally DIY. And so people are left to their own devices. And it's been really interesting to see how people are taking advantage of this. Uh, you know, whether they're doing, you know, videos on acapella and they're doing every instrument and then, or, or sending it to all the band members, you know, there's a lot of that. Or if they just choose to, you know, twice a week at 4.30 p.m., I get on and I play acoustic songs and I do eight of them, you know, or whatever. Now, what's been interesting to me is the people that are deviating from that. And What do you mean? What do you mean? Man, I mean, you stick somebody in their house for a couple of weeks and you get to drilling down to like what's at the core of that person. And so, uh. you know, I mean, 
there's a, a lot of people that are kind of doing, you know, daily or semi-daily or weekly podcasts in their, uh, uh, I'm sorry, live streams, and they're playing songs on their acoustic guitar, some they've written, some are covers. But um, what's been interesting to me is the people that are letting themselves get vulnerable and letting themselves do things that they would normally do, the things that they would normally hide, like, you know, some oh. people walk through their house singing, you know, singing crazy music all day while they're cooking and stuff. And some people are are, are live streaming that. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. I mean, there's there's this guy, uh, Paul Klemper. He's a jazz musician. And uh, I've only known him from, you know, kind of jazz gigs and, and him sitting in where he, you know, plays, you know, he can play over a standard, he can play over cover, you know, it sounds really good. He's a great, he's a multi-instrumentalist. But here in the last couple of weeks, he's been putting on this, it's like a flight suit with like an X-Wing fighter helmet. <laughs> on some crazy lights in his living room and playing music that he's pre-recorded and then like kind of walking around his house with a bunch of effects on his microphone and just playing real just, free and to yeah. me that is just infinitely fascinating <laughs> i'm fascinated uh by this yeah. actually yeah that's a good point so you're seeing basically you're saying you're, you're getting to see different facets to people right that you just didn't didn't even know they had exactly exactly that's and, cool you know the more people uh i mean dude we're in a pandemic we might die tomorrow so why not let your freak flag fly sure. and just on a on a personal note that's why i have it really myself rather than like you know okay i'm gonna play some songs by the band here's the way on acoustic guitar you know i've been more like you know wanting to uh sit on my floor you know in a dirty old t-shirt and play my synthesizer while the cat weaves in and out of my legs or whatever yeah that's the kind of stuff i've been trying to get out there um, but I've yeah. seen those. Uh, th those are really great, uh, actually. Well, they're personal, right? You're you're just connecting with people on a personal level. It's the real me. It's what I yeah. do. Yeah. You know? And uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it's been really fun. An another guy, I mean, a couple of more people, I actually read a little list, you know, of <laughs> things to talk with Patrick about. I yeah. love it. <laughs> And you never run into dead time or roadblocks. Right, right. Just go for go for days. <laughs> yeah. But my friend Dickie Lee Irwin has been doing uh, some cool podcasts. And he just, it's, it's so much fun to see people, uh, uh, live cast, I mean. It's so much fun to see people react in the moment as you're texting them, you know. And like, you know, hey, Dickie, uh, you know, play this song, play that song. Now, Dickie might be embarrassed about this, but the other day he got on to do a live cast and uh, he couldn't get the mic to work. So he had 12 minutes of dead air, but you could see him. And dude, it was the, it was performance art. <laughs> it was so freaking fascinating. So you can, you can, uh, you can uh, talk to it, you know, you, you can uh, connect by texting, you know, hey, Dickie, your mic's not working. Hey, D are, are you being held against your will? You know, <laughs> think twice if you're in danger. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I found that real fascinating. Another uh, friend of mine, Todd Wolfson, has been doing some super crazy ass live streams. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. the live stream. You think that's going to, do you think that's going to stick around? even after events, you know, venues open up and people start touring again and stuff? I do. I really do think it's going to be, yeah. And honestly, I haven't done one myself yet, but yeah, I think it's going to be right out there, right up there with like releasing a song or releasing a blog or a podcast. Yeah. Oh, oh that makes sense. Yeah, that makes and sense. With a more formal, like I'm releasing my song on Spotify on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, look, um, for some people, they've probably had great success with it, right? Some people have probably done more than they were doing just playing at little bars and stuff. So they're like, I'm so, going to keep this going, right? Why, why would they stop? I mean, I, I've been surprised at, you know, how people have responded to the couple of things I've done. And uh, 
you know, and, and, and then you got like uh, the, the Venmo and the PayPal option. So, you know, people can still, I, I mean, I don't think you can make a living like if you're on tour, but it sure helps. And, and it's, yeah, touching. it's touching. Even, you know, when someone takes time out to send you five bucks because, uh, you know, the way you cooked an egg on live stream looked really interesting and made their day. I mean, what can you, ask, you know, what more can you ask for? Absolutely, man. There's uh, the support, um, you know, from people wanting to help out is, has been amazing. Um, at least the, you know, what I've seen from the restaurant industry side of things for sure. And even from the musician side of things, I've seen a lot of people, like you said, just supporting these live streams and these artists and throwing them some money to just keep going. Look, they are providing entertainment. Right, they are they are giving you something for it, so it's not like they're just like, here here's my Venmo, send me money, and I'll see you guys next week. No, it's like, look, I'm gonna put it just the same way you'd be at a bar and you put on a show and you pay a cover and exactly right, you know, you get to sit at home in your own cl- in your underwear, yeah, dr- drinking your own beer, yeah, right, like saving money, like whatever, like it's it's kind of dude, it might become. I don't know, man. I, I think I'm going to, I think you're going to see a lot of people do it actually when this is said, I really feel that way. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's going to replace anything. No, it, it won't replace it. Well, um, I'm curious, uh, in, you know, on, on your end, uh, the more food oriented stuff, what, what are chefs doing? What are people that like to cook doing? Good sort of the same sort of yeah. thing, you know, trying to do like a live stream, maybe show some recipes they're making, offer classes, you know, so, sort of the same sort of thing and, and put, you know, their Venmo or whatever. Now, if they're working for a restaurant, right, they're they're focused on that. Like they're, they're trying to take care of their staff, you know, pivot whatever their place of business is to start doing takeout and delivery. And uh, you've got to change so much to set up your kitchen for that if that's all you're doing, you know, the logistics behind it, right? Like how that, that works. Um, it, it just think of it the same way. Like, you know, when, when you're, you know, when you, when you play right with a band, everyone has their place, right. And everyone, the way the stage is set up, it's a certain way. Um, it's just think of it as just a different stage, right? So we've got to, we've got to change things up. So like, it's like bases, you're going over here now. You know, this guy's coming around here. We're going to move here. You're going to step behind him, you know, blah, blah. Yeah. That's basically what's happening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because there's so many moving parts to both of these things. And yes. they involve, I mean, they can involve a whole group of people. Um, and I, I bet kind of like the music thing, probably the quality uh, or how much uh, tech goes into it, you know, because some people are just holding up their phone you know just just talking into their phone and, and some people like have microphones and reverb and effects and it's like holy shit i'm watching a freaking cooking show you know <laughs> yeah or, or in the music sense but you seeing the same thing in, in cooking pretty much um you know honestly probably less so because you know cooks and chefs and they don't know t- technology in that way you know, they're, they're not going to know about mics and this and that, like they, they just don't know um, somebody else probably helping them with that. Um, you know, musicians a little more likely to maybe have a more legit setup to things. Maybe, maybe not. Right. John's like, <laughs> dude, I saw Johnny's uh, Gowdy's right. Like he, his setup was nice. He, he put up a little mic. He, oh, totally. Right. Like he, he got the background thought of every, just thinking of everything. Right. Like, it's it's uh, you know it's beautiful it's like yeah it's yeah cool totally art man and yeah he's been doing it you know his podcast always sounds great totally yeah it, it's you know honestly i switched the podcast i would have loved to i'm gonna have to get you on again man when we you can actually come in the studio because uh, that's what i miss i mean this is great doing it at my house and everything but um you know the quality is not the same as going into a studio that has all the great equipment and, you yeah. know, doing the podcast. Like we, we were just getting into the thick of things, you know, when this happened, it was yeah. like, damn man, like, are you kidding me? We just, you know, had, had, we're adding video and it was just like, damn, this is really going to change everything. You know, like I'm going to have to take a few steps back and, 
pivot and try to do this on my own. And, um, and I'm not smart. So I was worried about that. <laughs> Wait, rely on me. Oh shit, guys. We done <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. We done fucked up. Uh, yeah. but you know, it's, I guess everybody's having to adapt, right? Make changes, accept the, the new normal. Totally. That, that's it. Here's a question for you. Cause uh, you know, music can be over, you know, online live streaming or whatever over uh, say that, that new app acapella, it can be a group effort. You know, people are doing that where I'm going to record the drum track and then I'm going to send it to the bass player and he's going to do the bass track. Can that be done with cooking? I mean, are there people that are like, you know, I'm going to show you how to make the sauce and then we're going to click over to Jim in Toronto who's going to show you how to do the pasta just right. Are people doing that? <laughs> I don't know, John, but that's a great idea if they're not. I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm making a face because I think it's a great idea. Like, holy shit, how has nobody thought of that? That's wow. a great idea. I don't know, Chef Appella, though we need a new name, like something yeah. that that – you're right. That's a great idea. Fuck. Uh, pardon my French, dude. Yeah, but, it's okay. <laughs> um, people are using acapella to cook meals because that's an interesting. That yeah, really I, is an interesting idea. You know, my friend Jim in Seattle is the best sous chef, and he's so good with sauces or whatever. I mean, I, that's exactly what we're talking about. People are having it's a great idea with their own ways through this, and there's no food industry or music industry to really even to show us what to do we're having to just make it up absolutely i mean you know co cooking is one of those things that it's a little different than music just for this sense that not everyone can play an instrument or sing but pretty much everyone can cook something wh whether it be even one <laughs> egg or they they know how to open a can and heat it up Okay, maybe, maybe that's not cooking, but you, you know how to prepare food for yourself, you yeah. know, um, and that's why it's such a weird thing, because it's something we can all do, but at and the same, to, yeah, and have to now, especially, yeah, that's a good point, too, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's amazing how little people actually know, you know, about yeah. it, that's crazy. I I know so little about cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, it, you know what's funny is this is what I tell people all the time. If you want to cook more at your house, th there's one thing you can do, and it will immediately get you to cook more. It's real simple. Got my pen. Your, your kitchen is probably set up in a way. <laughs> uh, your kitchen is probably set up in a way that's not viable for cooking. You probably got this over here and that over here and a pot over here and a spatula over here bring everything together it's called mise en place that's the term we use in the restaurant industry it just means everything in its place mise en place uh it's a french term a french word okay yeah it's a french uh, french term etymology and this kind of stuff and and it's basically you just want to <laughs> set up your kitchen just think of like your guitar setup right you you got your guitar you got your amp you put your pedals in front of you you don't put one pedal over here one over there one pedal over here right because you'd be walking all over the stage <clears throat> it's the exact same thing when you're okay. you set up your kitchen to cook easier so you can cook and clean quickly, right? You can pull anything out you need and you can clean it quickly. You will cook a thousand times more because that's what stops people a lot of time from cooking. Fuck, man, this is going to be a whole fucking disaster to cook, right? I've got to do this. I got to pull this out over here. Yes. You're looking for everything. You don't know where should it. That, that's the key. Get your kitchen set up in a way that you can quickly cook and you will cook all the time dude that is so interesting i'm approaching music in the same way right now and i'll show you how because i mean you know there's no there's no girlfriend there's no roommate there's no gigs so i don't have to like tear the shit and set it up uh every time i do it so yeah like i've got an acoustic i've got two different electrics i've got a bass a piano oh. a couple of synths Damn. A couple of mics. Um, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah. My uh, my you know iPad holder on a mic stand always, so I can just throw the mic there. And and I had it actually pointing at me, but I had to move it. And you know, mics were always set up. You know, there's a keyboard. There's like amps. Uh, you know, check out this crazy ass old drum machine my friend Adam gave me. 
from like 1973. No way. Dude, he's got two of them. This one didn't work. Um, I didn't even know they made them back then. Yes. Uh, This thing is all over uh, like some Sly Stone records and some super early uh, Roxy Music used this thing. Um, Wow. It just had one blown, uh, uh, the power input was blown. So my friend over at uh, Jesse uh, Duke, uh, Killer Electronic, is it okay to name drop? Of course. Okay. I mean, these people do really cool shit that make, that moves me. So that's, wanna, a, that's what we want to highlight. Absolutely. Of course. We had that thing working in, in a day. That's awesome. So yeah, kind of like you're saying about the kitchen, I've yeah. got my musical world set up and it looks like spaghetti. The chords are everywhere, you know, but it doesn't matter. That's, that's, look, that's a, look, my kitchen, my kitchen is set up in a way. If you were to come over to my house, you know what, when this is all over, dude, I'm going to have you come over and I'm going to cook us a meal. That's, I would love that. <laughs> that, that. That is legitimately happening. And I'll show you my setup and how I do it. And it's easy, dude. It's, and I'll show you too. You don't need a lot of shit, right? That's what I hate about you see these commercials and they offer you, you can do this with this and go there. Get, that's all bullshit. All you need is one knife. You need yeah. one chef knife and a cutting board. And I can show you how to do everything with that. That's what intimidates me. Yes, uh, I, I if, get it. I get it. You know, like, okay, I don't have powdered, uh, I don't have onion powder and this red onions and yellow onions. So I better not cook, you know. Total, I get it. I mean, yeah, I better not cook. Yeah. <laughs> so easily convince yourself right like oh i guess i'm not cooking today which i get i get it man i i totally understand um people's aversion to it and and that intimidation factor of well shit do i have all this you don't need it dude i can show you how to make you know it's just pantry food like trust me chefs aren't like eating you know foie gras every day at home like (laughs) you know what i'm saying like they're right. making sandwiches and eggs and tacos and just simple stuff that we all eat, yeah. you know, the same way. There's nothing to be intimidated about. It's just food. It's just food. You're not saving lives. You know, it's just heat. It, all it is is bringing stuff to heat, waiting, right. and then eating it. I mean, it's literally that simple, right? There's really no craziness to it. Now, it seems crazy when people put these amazing dishes together, right. That you see on TV, like food, food porn right now is massive, right? You Instagram and YouTube, it's all about the video and the photo. And you just see some food that just like, you know, I mean, you immediately just have a reaction to it, right. Emotional reaction to it. It, and a lot, honestly, it's, it's a lot of that stuff is just from repetition, right? You learn that stuff from repetition. There's nothing crazy about it. There's no magic. There's no, it's it's not like music man music to me is 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 something different now food can get artistic but by all means but music is something just you know it's a whole nother animal you know honestly i think what i'm getting from what you're saying is that food and music are a hell of a lot alike they are a lot alike in a lot of ways and Uh you know but at the same time they're a little different you know but i like that that's okay It, it it's it's okay for for it to be that way, you know, yeah. it's, it's food is, you know, food's a, a weird thing because you eat it for sustenance, right? You, you, you actually need it to live. I mean, as much as I love music, you can live without it in the, oh, so, yeah. in the, in the, in the medical sense, right? That, that that's all I mean, uh, you know, but food then becomes an art at the same time. That's why food is so interesting to me in that sense, because you can look at food as well. I'm just going to put this in my mouth, eat it, go about my day and not, or I'm going to this Michelin starred, you know, restaurant. I'm eating a 27 course tasting menu and everything's put on with tweezers and, you know, and it's yeah. foams and airs, you know, it's just all this crazy thing. Um, it, it becomes a whole different food experience, right? Like that's, that's not a normal I'm just eating grandma's lasagna. Like it becomes just this whole different thing. And that's, I just, so that's so fascinating to me that food can be an art as well as just something you need for sustenance. Like you're saying, you can dive in as deep as you want to go. Yeah. You can dive in as as deep as you want to go. Don't feel intimidated. Don't feel 
don't let people be pretentious about it with you. Anybody who's pretentious with food to you just started getting into food. That's why they're pretentious because they think, you know, oh, you're eating, you know, this or I eat this. It's like, bitch, what? Stop, stop already. You're not better than anybody because you eat this or you eat that, right? A true foodie knows that it's different for everybody, right? It's different for everybody. I, I don't, I don't criticize people's food choices. Now I can try to suggest things to you right. to, to that I feel might improve your experience with food, yeah. you know, and, and really it just comes down to sourcing. It all starts with a good piece of protein or a good vegetable or a good, right. It, it all starts with the product being good from the beginning. Yeah. That's, that's the key. You know, it, Are you able to get the, the stuff that you're used to cooking right now. Yeah, that, that's actually a really good question. Um, to be honest with you, I'm able to get far more, far more things now than I could before because some of the um, places that you source food from were yep. only selling directly to restaurants, but because of what's happened, they've had to pivot and start selling to the public. Exactly. That's gone. Yeah. Wow. So in a way, moving forward, like we were talking about, right, with musicians, like live stream will probably stick through even after that. Same. That's kind of the same thing with the food industry. After this is all said and done, some of these businesses that only used to sell the restaurant, they're going to continue to sell to the public even after this changes. So it's actually great for us. It's yeah. like, and you know, uh, Mark Lonigan or some, you know, really famous guy, like instead of having to go get his record, you know, he's on your computer right now playing a song for you. In totally. His living room. It's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Well, um, and by the way, I'm going to recommend your podcast to my friend, Paul. Uh, Cooper in Baton Rouge, who is just a killer sous chef. He's and he's one of my oldest best friends, and he's gonna love watching this. He's gonna awesome. Love you. Yeah, awesome. Here's something I noticed when I was at the when I go to the store now, and it's a new feeling for me. Is uh, you know, you go to the store once a week or twice a week or whatever before COVID, and you just kind of get the stuff that you eat. You know, I have some breakfast stuff, I have some lunch stuff, I have some uh, dinner stuff. And then I'm going to supplement that throughout the week for variety's sake uh, by where I eat out at. That's where I'm going to define my personality is where I go to get a meal. And so now that that's out of the way and you can't do that, well, you can a little bit. But what I'm getting at is when I go to the store now, I'm very aware of how the food I choose is a reflection of my personality because it's all I'm going to get. And so... I've got to think about it while I'm in the store. There's no, it's been weird. It's been weird for me. <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting insight. God, John, you're so insightful about a lot of things, man. I love the way you, seriously, I love the angle you take about thinking about things. Uh, Answer the questions. Cause like, I, I've been like, I, I eat a lot of, uh, you know, prepared meals and I get a lot of frozen meals and you know, that's, that's kind of how I eat. I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say it, but that, that is how I do it. Don't um, be. But like, I'll be like, man, I'm freaking tired of eating this fucking Cajun food, which I love. <laughs> Here's the thing. You can get some killer frozen gumbo at HEB. Yeah. And some red beans and rice. And, you know, uh, sometimes it comes in big blocks and, uh, you know, I, 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 I do a lot of that stuff, but the food you choose in the grocery aisle is going to stick with you for a whole week. And so you've got to get creative with it. And I've been noticing that and it's a new thing. That's great. That's another way to get into food, being creative with it, change up what you normally would get. You know, the way I would suggest is do it slowly every week, add a new thing, pick one night of the week that you're going to cook something different, you know, for dinner or whatever it may be. And yeah. you'll, you'll start to fold in to your recipe book, right? You're like, yeah. Yeah, I know how to make pork chops. Yep. I know how to make steak. I know, I know what to do with ground beef. Oh, I know what to do with chicken thighs. Like all of a sudden you just start knowing how this works. Right. So keep your frozen stuff, keep all that stuff, but just pick like one night a week where you're going to ma actually make something, you know, keep it simple, just rice and a protein, your vegetables and a protein, you know? Yeah. I, on a real simple scale, I've been doing that more. Nice. The kid, I had to. Totally. 
you know, a teenager in, in 20s and stuff. Um, but uh, man, the way I eat <clears throat> a lot of times, especially if I'm busy with work and traveling and maybe on the road or something, it's all about what's right there and what, you know. Yeah, right. If you're touring or traveling, you're, it's what's convenient to where you're going, right? I mean, to what's happening. Yeah. Which yeah. is because you experience the culture through it. Sure. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, look, you're right. You, you are a reflection of what you eat. You are what you eat. Again, you put this in your body. It, the, the healthiest thing you can do your whole life is watch what you eat. Oh, my God. That, that's yeah. literally it. That's the healthiest thing you could do for yourself. Like smoking, drinking, that, great. Those are all bad things. I get it. But if you don't eat right, none of that matters. Food is everything. Food is your health. Uh, that's it. You, you, it's, it's that simple. Think about it. Your body is made up of the food you're putting in it. It's the energy it provides. You, you become an extension of that food. Totally. It's just that simple. Um, in some healthy ways, I'm stretching out. I can see it in the uh, fruits that I choose and the uh, raw vegetables that I choose, which, uh, you know, like uh, I, I really got into carrots. <laughs> you know, I really got into. I can love carrots. And then one day they didn't have blueberries for quite a while, maybe like five days there were no blueberries. So I started trying blackberries and strawberries and, and uh, just different stuff like that. It's really interesting what you can get right now. Yeah, I think that's important, man. It's important to keep a balance, keep some good stuff. Look, it's, it'll make you a better musician. You will write better songs. You will, everything will improve if you eat better. It's that simple. You'll sleep better then in turn, you're more creative, right? I mean, it's just, yeah. it has such a domino effect. The food does, you know, your skin, your, your totally. mental, your mental totally. state, right. Of, of where you're at. Um, it, it's just so crazy how, how important it is, you know, to, to get the right stuff in your body. I think I am eating better. Yeah. Cause there's no, uh, you know, late night pizza at the end of the gig to, you know, I can put off eating because I'm going to get this, you know, something. Some that's hard, right? It's sometimes eating some stuff like that at a gig, like that's got to be really hard. It's hard and it's, it's uh, an occupational hazard. You yeah. know, it's like you've been in the club for six, seven hours and you haven't eaten and you're finished playing and it's one in the morning and God damn those chicken, those fried chicken <laughs> good totally I, I get it dude like i fucking get it trust me i, I would probably eat the fucking chicken fingers my look you're not alone dog if you think chefs like i said dude honestly i hate to say that but it's true like chefs are some of the worst eaters on the planet like that's the truth man you, you talk to some chefs they're eating hot pockets okay like <laughs> I'm not joking. They're making the most amazing meals during the day. But uh, then when it's time for them to eat, uh, you know, we eat like shit. I, I did that for a long time. Like I, I eat better now than I ever did before because I'm out of the restaurants now. I'm not working seven days a week, 16 hour days and eating becomes hard. Dude. As crazy as that sounds, that's what happens. And it's car. The mechanic's car, you know, he's working on cars all day, and then his is just duct tape and totally you know, coat hangers and barely running. That's a chef. That's like a, a chef. A chef who's working. Yeah. That is more than likely how they eat. Now, not all of them, right? There are people who find that balance, but the majority is. It's hard to eat right. It's hard to have a meal because you end up just eating this and that all day because you're tasting shit. So then it's hard to just sit down and actually have a meal. And if you do, it's at the very end and it's not going to be something good. It's going to be something quick. Maybe that pizza or maybe this or that. Like that's literally legitimately what happens. Okay. What? I mean, ask your sous chef friend, ask him. He's, he will tell you that he's going to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I don't eat very well when I'm working. It's hard because I'm working, you know? Because I just think when he's not working, he's sitting there doing reductions and making bullion. And oh, please, hell oh. no! Uh, that would be so weird if he was doing that. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I just is so rare. Now, you know something. You okay, dude? You were talking about how you get to see all these different facets to musicians now, right? And artists like that. You like that? Same thing yeah. with chefs uh, because chefs haven't had the opportunity to do it. 
you are getting to see chefs making reductions at home and all this stuff on, on because they're in quarantine and they're at lockdown. So that's actually kind of cool to see chefs doing the stuff that they didn't get to do before, you know, for, for themselves. I mean, you know, yeah. so it, it like yeah. master doing something that they are killer at. That's yeah. man. Interesting. Yeah. One of the ways the, you know, the pivot of this has, has all happened. Let, let me ask you this, John, I've been asking everybody this. What was there a moment or a day or whatever where you just knew this is serious, you know, th this whole thing that's happening, like, yeah, um, it came in two stages for me. Um, I listened to this podcast called Mysterious Universe out of Australia, and these guys are super snarky and super skeptical. Um, I started seeing the headlines, maybe even late December, maybe early January, there's a weird flu going on, you know, going around in, in Wuhan. Uh, so these guys, uh, we're starting to talk about it. They're influenced by China. Whatever happens in China is going to happen in Australia eventually. So they're totally on it. And, uh, dude, they were about a month ahead. They about on how it spread. They told you how to tell if it was going to spread. They said, you know, Singapore is the most, uh, rule oriented country in our section of the world. If it starts hitting in Singapore, get worried. Um, and they started talking about uh, toilet paper shortages in wow. January. Wow. These guys were coming on. They're like, yeah, I went to the store the other day. And these guys are hilarious. They're not a gloomy, they're not a, gro a gloomy lot. They're just fucking hilarious. But uh, uh, one of the guys said, uh, I think it was mid-January. He's like, you know, I went to the store to get my toilet paper. And they were, you know, the aisle was almost bare. And people had... Uh, shopping carts piled to the ceiling with toilet paper. He's like, so if you're listening, they didn't say this, but they said kind of like, you know, get you some toilet paper. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, so those guys definitely perked my ears. And then I think when it really became real was uh, when South by canceled and when the Olympics we're talking about canceling. Once I heard those two things, I was like, holy shit, this is not going away. Because yeah. those, you know, mega money events, no one's going to cancel that shit unless it's coming down. Uh, so, so I think we're lucky in Austin because I think like most people, when we heard South by was canceling, we were like, holy shit, this is real. Maybe I should have a 10 pound bag of rice. Yeah. Maybe you should have, you know, a grocery bag full of canned goods and, uh, you know, yeah. So that was my awakening experience. So luckily for you and I, it was probably earlier than a lot of the country. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I think for me too, it was definitely uh, South by getting canceled because I just thought there's no way, right? There's no way they're going to cancel South. And when they did, I just thought, holy shit, um, there's, yeah. there's no way they're going to cancel something like this unless it's absolutely serious. one they've never canceled south by ever for anything right and just the hundreds of millions of dollars that were at stake you know that had already been spent on the festival i thought oh they're gonna throw all this away i just thought holy shit this this is definitely i, I just that blew my mind you know that definitely was the, yeah. was the this is serious moment for sure uh there was one thing one other thing uh when I started seeing those big Italian uh, soccer teams, I think it might've been Milan playing to an empty stadium. I was like, holy shit, this is real. Right, like, yeah, people aren't showing up for a soccer game. Like, you know shit's yeah. like fucking yeah. crazy. Exactly. They're not letting him, you know, because when it first hit, they, they were letting them uh, play to empty stadiums. And, you know, there were a couple of big games. Now, I, I think you're really into football. so. Um, one of, one of my, uh, football friends was telling me that, uh, since, uh, I think it's Belarus is, uh, oh shit, here we go. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Madrid. Oh my God. Are you going into, uh, are you, are you going into withdrawal? Um, now I, I honestly don't watch it too, too much. I follow a lot of like the stats and stuff, but like watching the games. Yeah. I mean, look, it sucks. 
I'm not yeah. going to lie. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what, I have family and stuff that's definitely going into withdrawal. Wow. Like for a real, like they're about to like kill somebody <laughs> if, if somebody doesn't start playing some, uh, some uh, soccer soon. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Well, here's what a friend uh, told me the other day is uh, since Belarus, uh, basically they're just going on with normal life. They're, they're not canceling football games. They're not canceling anything. Uh, oh, really? Oh, I didn't. Jesus. That's what I've heard. I mean, for better or for worse. So their, uh, their football teams are playing. Their football teams are broadcasting live. The stands are packed. People are, people oh, that shit. are jonesing are tuning into these football matches in Belarus. And people are starting to learn the teams and picking out favorites and stars. And it's like this little That's microcosm. funny. Yeah. Isn't that a trip? That is a trip. I never thought that. So, so yeah, from what I heard, I could be wrong, but from what I heard, those leagues are just playing away. And so people from all over the world are checking in and that makes sense. Yeah. They got to get their fix. Totally. Soccer is something that people are into year round. You know, the thing with the, yeah. like American sports is it has the seasons, right? And, and they have the seasons too, but they're involved in so many other leagues. Imagine if, the Dallas Cowboys played in the NFL and they played in the YFL and the this, and there was a this league and a that league. That's yeah. soccer. It, that's, it's hard for people to understand that because here it's, you're in one league and that's it. And that's all you play. And, and they, you know, that's it. They're three months on and nine months off, right? Like not soccer, dude. They play like 364 days a year. Those motherfuckers like never get a day off. They're constantly playing in all kinds of leagues and, it's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 a year round sport, right? It never stops. National teams and the international teams. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 A, yeah. So yeah, man, some places are just deadly serious uh about their social restrictions. Some places are just not doing it at all. What do you think about the restaurant as somebody you know, who, who, who's going to go out and do stuff. I'm curious what, what your mindset is of like, are you afraid to go eat at a restaurant right now? Or are you even afraid to order to go or take out? Like, does that bother you? I was a little uh, spooky about getting takeout uh, until I heard, uh, I don't know if it was CDC or whatever. They're like, you know, it just doesn't live that long on food. You put it on a fork, you put it in your mouth, your saliva is breaking it down, your stomach acids you're probably not going to catch it on food, you know, maybe wash your hands really good after you touch the packaging. Um, once that information came out, I, I, I felt a little better about it. Um, I personally am, everyone's got to figure out their own way of dealing with it. With yeah. it. I'm going to be, I'm going to hold back for a couple of weeks and see how it goes before I start inserting myself into, uh, social life you know like eating together or having a cup of coffee at a table with friends yeah i'm kind of i mean to be to be frank with you dude i'm kind of in the same boat even even though i know all the precautions restaurants are going to take and i know all the safety and a lot of this stuff restaurants do do already to be to be frank with you this yeah. is a lot of stuff that they already did um you know that, that's a one thing they teach you in kitchens is taste everything and keep your shit clean like that's the two rules to to know. That's it. Like there's nothing else to know. Um, cl cleanliness is just so important. It's about cross contamination, right? You just it's a major factor to a kitchen. So, and washing your hands constantly. I mean, it's just something we already did. Um, now, front of house, meaning you know waiters, bartenders, that that area of the restaurant, they're not as used to that stuff. So they're actually it's going to be harder for them than the kitchen staff. Yes. Um, you know, to adapt to all this stuff. But to be frank with you, dude, like I'm, I'm weary of it too, about going out to these places and not even for the staff. I'm more worried about customers, idiots around me that uh -huh. aren't right. Like that's what I'm worried about. It's like riding a motorcycle, right? People always say, well, Patrick, why don't you ride a motorcycle? What? You know, not, not that people are coming up to me and saying that I'm just saying <laughs> if I yeah. like randomly, like, why don't you ride a motorcycle? No, yeah. it's more like if I'm talking with somebody that has a motorcycle, I'll say, yeah, man, I used to have a motorcycle ride. Oh, why don't you ride anymore? I don't, I'm not worried about me. 
mm-hmm. on the motorcycle, I'm worried about other idiots around me that are going to do something to me. And that's yeah. the same situ that's the same feeling I have right now is I'm not worried about myself or the restaurant doing anything. It's more just other people around me eating. Are they taking the right precautions? Have they taken? Right. So that that's my concern. And I don't know. I need to see 50% or more capacity, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, plus, you know, let all these first wave of people go out and see what happens to them. And, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Let's, let's let the uh, guys... <laughs> state capital it's if they don't get sick you know in a couple of weeks maybe i can go you know go get a slice of pizza at east side a hundred percent i mean we're gonna have to eventually right we're gonna have to get back out and go to concerts and go eat at places and mm-hmm. and what what go to the movies go to you know are some businesses going to be forever affected by this absolutely um for sure um and restaurants too you know will eating be the same moving forward i don't know i i our concert's going to be the same you know you're so tight at some concerts right i mean you're just like literally breathing the same air like are you kidding me Oops. yeah you're so close you're sweaty you're yeah. you know you're drunk half high on something you know just like everybody it, that's going to be tough to keep some distancing at those places when they're drunk or high, you know, and all the, you know, Oh, I can uh, stick my finger in my mouth this one time. Nobody's watching. (laughs) 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 So yeah, when alcohol's involved, that's a whole nother level of like carelessness. I mean, I I know one thing I'm super paranoid about touching door handles and gas. Yes. And you should be dog. Like, don't be, that's a genuine concern to have is, is that with me forever now. Yeah. No, unfortunately I, I can be a germaphobe. How about you? If I'm think about it. Yes. If I'm distracted, I don't even, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, I don't know if I'm, my mind's occupied with some, I can easily forget about things and just, touch the door but if i'm like it's on my mind oh i'm super aware of it that's interesting because you say thinking about it because i'm the same way um i can be a real germaphobe but it only only if i'm thinking if i don't have anything to do i mean i can just obsess on it but, yeah i upset exactly i overthink it yeah, yeah. but totally. if i'm play a gig or like i'm going through a train station or something you just grab shit you know i want a piece of pizza i want this i want that you know you just it goes out the window we've got so much fucking uh self-reflection time right now absolutely um it it is crazy in that sense um uh, so in some ways it's it's gonna be bad for people you know, and in some ways it's a great thing. You know, I worry about some friends that I have that are mentally not handling this well. They're just not meant for this, you know, and other people that are thriving, other friends I talk to, they're like, this is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Like I'm, I'm coming out on top, you know, so it's, it's kind of crazy. I'm in this little bathroom. Um, I see a little of that in myself too. I tend to isolate, like if I've been out, you know, traveling and stuff, or I've been working 30 days in a row and I come home, I might do exactly what I'm doing right now for three or four days, just sit at home, hunker down. Um, so I am used to it and I know how to ride it out and I know how to even take advantage of it and get yeah. in a and maybe create in a way that I wouldn't if I was like constantly dealing with uh, stimulation. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it, yeah, it, it really is just what you're going to do with it, right? What you're going to do with the time. And, yeah. you know, I'm kind of the same way I worked from home before this. So not really too much has changed for me in that sense. But I just I can't go rock climbing anymore. I can't go out to eat at, you know, the restaurants I like to go eat at and the bars and right. And, that aspect has changed, but as far as just being home during the day and working at home, that, nothing's changed for me, right? That, that's all the same. So I know some people are definitely having a harder time adjusting than myself. I'm, I can be alone. I have no problem being alone, 
Um, I can entertain myself. Sometimes, in fact, I love being alone. I like inter- I like my own company, to be frank with you. Dude, some of these days have been the best days of my life. Me too. Yeah, that's crazy, right? That's, damn. that's I mean, crazy. People are dying. Yeah. You know, but, um, I know what you're saying, though. You're not. I, I, I get what you're saying. I never thought it would be like that. Yeah. I, I truly had some amazing days where I've just like explored something and, and not given a fuck. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, you have to talk about your painting. You just did. You've been doing some painting, right? I have. I just before it started, um, just before all this kicked in, I, uh, my neighbor was painting, uh, using this, uh, alcohol ink and I, and I, I popped over and saw what he was doing. I was like, Holy shit. You know, can I try that? You know, and he's like, yeah, man, just pick up a blank piece of paper and try it. You know, I just fell for it. Yeah. And, uh, awesome. yeah, a couple of months down the road and, and, uh, uh, 11 or so little paintings. I'm just finding my way, but I, I stocked up on supplies for it before the, the hammer came down. Yeah. That's funny. That's true. I saw the last one you did. Um, it was, it just looked really cool. Now I'm not, I don't know anything about art, so, I can't look at it and be like, oh, I see the sensationalism of the 19th century coming through the bottom left hand corner. You know, I love the, you know, whatever strokes you use. Like, I, you're not going to get that from me, right? I'm just going to go, that looks fucking cool. <laughs> yep. Like, that's it. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I'm trying to approach it, you know, kind of like with my childlike mind. When I'm in my healthiest, you know, that's how I am. And, and, as a listener, music listener, food enjoyer, uh, you know, art appreciator, appreciative person, you know, hopefully that's like you're saying, that's how you're taking it. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just, um, I, I guess that's the great thing about art is everyone takes the piece in differently, whatever it may be. You know, I've been to lots of museums and all over the world, uh, some really fabulous ones. And that's a, Dude, I, I love that. looking at art, but I'm not an art you know, whatever. What, what were you going to say? I say, I, I know you, you've, you've had some unique opportunities to sit with like the best museums in the world. Yeah, yeah man. I've, I've really seen some really cool stuff and it, again, I don't know anything about art or the history of it or this or that, but I know what, I just get feelings from pieces. That's how it is for me. I, I walk up, I look at something and I feel something and then I just ride that. I don't try to explain it though. So don't right. ask me, right? Like I can't, explain anything to you but i could just say yeah this makes me feel angry or happy or i feel for that person or i might even just say something stupid like that house looks cool in the background or i like the way those trees are or you know i don't know i mean but that's what i like about art i I feel that just like a song you know you put it out it's up to the listener to decide what it means to them now you can try to explain it to them all day long no i wrote it like this and i meant this and that you can do that all day long, but still that person go, no, I, I feel it like this or, you know, in fact, some of that can take away the mystery of something. It can ruin it for people. Exactly. Right. And, and, um, I'm a couple of things I'm noticing about art and artists in a graphic sense <clears throat> is, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of talking about it and there's a lot of, <laughs> and, and, you know, Sometimes your art can be judged on how good of a line of bullshit you can put out about it. Um, and, and, uh, God, what else? I lost my train of thought, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, like the cult of personality of owning a simple moment in someone whose personality you find interesting. You're owning this little moment of them and you can put it on your wall and reflect on how that person who you find interesting, how they were feeling in that moment on that day when they made it. It's fucking mind blowing. Wow. That's a great way to look at it. I never uh, looked at it like that, but you're absolutely right. That is mind blowing. Um, Now let me ask you a question. Let's get real. Um, Have you ever had a work of art make you cry? Bring tears to your eyes for like no reason. I wouldn't say for no reason, but I've definitely teared up at some disturbing pieces that I've seen before. Yeah. So that may just even be more, you know, that shock effect that it's having on me. 
because it was very real, you know, imagery of people suffering. And I don't like that. Like that's a, you're going to, you're going to hit the PAT in the heart that way. Like I'm immediately uh, affected by anyone struggling or images of people struggling. I, I can't, I can't take it. Yeah, me too. Um, and that's kind of like, uh, what brings me to that question is cause, uh, I've had a couple of times where I've stood in front of a work of art that I've read about and have seen all my life. And then all of a sudden you're at, you know, the museum and it's a foot away from you and you know, it's, it's right there in front of you. And, um, like Van Gogh, you know, has hit me that way, you know, I don't know why. And it's not like the subject of the painting is particularly sad. Maybe it's the sunflowers or the starry night, but his paintings, for some reason, when I've come face to face with them and looked at them, they've uh, just moved me like that. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And, and another thing is like, they're tiny. Like you see them in the books, you don't know if they're fucking 10 feet high. Uh, that's a lot of uh drawings and paintings right when you actually see them in person you're like what the this is it this is it like it's like when i first saw the statue of liberty i was like bitch this is all it is really yeah i was like i thought it was gonna be some i don't know what i thought i just thought it was gonna be some massive i don't know bigger than it actually is i thought it was gonna be bigger and i guess if you're on the island and you're looking up at it it's probably pretty it is it does look big right there but when you're driving like the first time i drove into new york city and i'm just like looking out over the water to look for it i was like oh that's that little thing really that's it yeah really i thought i'm not going to see that thing i'm not wasting my time to go uh and i never have i never have have taken the half because it's like a half a day or a day to like a big deal isn't it yeah yeah it's a whole ride a ferry ride and you, and you got to stay out there on the on the little island for a couple hours i just never interested me you know whatever well you yeah. know i see it from afar yeah but, but we're getting at the same thing though yeah. like finally rest you know in the flesh resting your eyes on this iconic thing that you've only been told about or you've seen in, in books a zillion times <clears throat> what about um in austin are there any like cool museums here that you've gone to that you like man that's a real good question well uh a lot of people it doesn't come to mind often but uh the ransom center you know the, uh, i don't know about that it's down on ut and uh it's more of like a library um but they must have got some, they must have put their funding in, in the right places because they own one of the only Gutenberg Bibles in the world. You know, I think there might be six left and uh, one of them is in the Ransom Center about four miles from where you and I are sitting right now. So you can- Oh, that's them. pretty cool. Yeah, they've got that. They've got one of the very first photographs. Um, it's that really famous one you see in, in uh, anytime you read about photography, the first photograph, you know, it's just this really grainy rooftop uh, Paris scene, but they've got the tintype of it. They've got it. Um, oh, wow. And then another thing they've got, uh, someone told me this, uh, they bought a lot of Aleister Crowley's personal effects. <laughs> like they have his cane and his tarot deck and all this shit. And, I think, I don't know if it's true or not, you can go and, you know, if you're a student, you can say, I would like to see Aleister Crowley's personal tour deck, you know. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. I'd be wrong about that stuff, but I like that place. I, I love the uh, uh, the new, uh, uh, the Blanton, man. That's pretty hip. That's a pretty hip museum. We've been needing a place like that. Yeah, totally, dude. That's, um, I think that's important for a city to attract a certain type of tourist to be honest with you you know you got to have some culture in your city otherwise you're just going to get spring breakers yeah totally you know and they spend a different kind of money i mean i'm just speaking economically here like those type of people come and they spend a different type of money you know it it thrives more throughout the city it spiders out more and yeah i mean it's important to have uh, that, that sort of culture in your city. So Austin's getting better at it. It's a smaller city. It's like Austin's such a weird place, right? It's like 
it's such a weird place. It's small town, but but big city ish. Like it's such a weird. It's right in between. Yeah, but you have noticed. I mean, I'm sure we both notice this in the last maybe 15 or 20 years. It's become an international destination. So. Oh, for sure. You see, San Antonio has been one for, you know, you can be in downtown San Antonio 30 years ago and run into a huge group of Japanese tourists, you know. Yeah, yeah. The Alamo, right? The the river walk, like it had a reason to bring you there. Yeah, Austin's starting to be like that where, uh, you know, you might see a group of tourists from some other country or, you know, you go to a bar uh, at the end of the day, you're going to bump into someone from Finland or whatever, you know. Oh, a, a lot of tourists here, dude. When I had my food truck on Rainy Street, um, Street dude. T- t- ton <laughs> Tons of tourists were coming. That was it. That was mainly who I sold to, to be honest with you, was was tourists. So definitely a lot of tourists that come to Austin. Way more than I thought. I didn't know that either, dude, until my food truck got to Rainy because my food truck before was on South on Lamar and Barton Springs. So I'm getting a lot of locals. But yeah. once I got to Rainy, I'm at Container Bar and I'm right across from the hotel there. Um, you just getting a lot of tourists, dude. Ra- it, tur- people go to Rainy Street. The tourists go to Rainy Street. So yeah, I was just seeing a lot, like you said, people from all over the world all the time. Plus the conference center, too, is just down Red River there. So, right there. you know, a lot, lot of, lot of, yeah, a lot of tourists coming through Austin. I'll be honest. If it was me, let's say I lived in, I don't know, I wouldn't come to. I don't know if I would come to Austin. I don't know if I would spend a trip, a vacation trip, to go to Austin. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one for me. Like, I need a reason to go there for something else. Right. I think, well, a lot of people come for the tech, you know, the conventions. Yeah, things. that makes sense. Tech events and yeah. board, uh, music and all. But, yeah, that's that's a different thing that I've noticed in the last 15 years in, in the Blanton Museum. It kind of hit it. What do people say to you about Austin, like, when you're traveling, you know, the world, touring and stuff? Um. Well, I'm amazed that they know about it, you know, because I still think of it as, you know, you know, they're like, oh, Austin, you know, do you see the position? What about, you know? um, people are like, a, a lot of people have been here in the weirdest place. They're like, oh, yeah, I love Austin. I was there, you know, I was there four years ago. Um, <laughs> it's, it's got a hell of a reputation. It really does. Um, is it like a Texas reputation, like when you're out? Is that how people see some you people, sort of thing? Some people occasionally, you know, you will get that that kind of like, you know, I know you're, you know, you got to knock the scorpions out of your shoes before you put them on. So, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, there's some of that, but yeah, a lot of people have been here now and uh, it's kind of a trip. Uh, and dude, how lucky we've been here, you know, because with South by getting canceled so early, I mean, and how early the town locked down. I mean, dude, we've got less cases and deaths than cities, uh, you know, half our size. And so totally. yeah, you're right. Yeah. If we hadn't canceled South by dude, can you imagine what South by would have done? Holy. Oh, we would have been like New Orleans with Mardi Gras. I mean, they just, yeah. And then St. Patrick's Day, the quarter was jam-packed, and, and now you've got, you know, thousands of deaths, you know. Right. I, I forget what Austin's death toll is, but I think it's still in the double digits, man. Yeah, you're right. It's not um, much of anything. Um, we're, you're right. You're 100% right, dude. It, but South By would have changed that. I mean, if we would have had South By, fuck. I mean. It, I, I have no doubt it would be like New Jersey, Italy, or, you know any place you can think of that's had, had a really hard time. Yeah. And I wasn't thinking that at first when it happened, I was kind of like, damn, they canceled it. I, I wasn't sure if it was necessary to be honest with you. I mean, I was still, damn, man, I don't know. This is a big deal because like my company that I work was flying in from England. Right. Uh-huh. So that I had a whole team of people coming over, you know, they bought plane ticket. You know, my boss, he paid all this money. He's, buying all the stuff for South by, you know, Airbnb, all this money spent. And I'm thinking, okay, they're just one, that's just one company. There's thousands of companies that are coming like that. 
I don't know. It just didn't, I guess I just wasn't seeing the whole picture yet. I just didn't understand it yet. And quickly I learned, realized this definitely was the right decision, right? Because I'm thinking about the economic impact as well of, of, again, I'm very selfish in the sense that I think inside my bubble, which is food. So, you know, I'm thinking about all the restaurants and all these people that bought all this product to sell during South by and now they're stuck with it on top of not making any money now that they have to shut down. I mean, it was just like, you know, musicians too, right? All these gigs cancel people. You're probably going to live off of that money for a while. Mm -hmm. And, and that was a big thing too. A lot of the people use South by as a way to make up for a slow winter. So when that money didn't come in, fuck. Yeah. And to get you through those lean summer months. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I missed out on all that shit. Um, yeah. I mean, like you, I was like, should they do it? I mean, yeah. should they, but I started, I just kept looking at the Olympics and I figure, man, if this is serious, are you sanitizing your head? Yeah. You I, did, I did. I did it like, <laughs> look, put a little rosemary in your, in the alcohol. It'll give it a little, uh, make it easier on the hands. It smells better. Aromatic. That's why it has that color. I didn't want you thinking like, what the fuck is he? Is piss, Patrick? Yeah, you're just like, I'm, re- I'm reusing <laughs> alcohol, right? This- <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, man, I, I started watching the Olympics and I figured if, if they're canceling that, this is real serious. Cause dad, Have they ever canceled the Olympics before? Has that even ever happened? I think they've only canceled it because of world wars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damn. That's it's crazy. Hard to tell. We're in the middle of it. It's hard to yeah. see outside. But this yeah. one of those events that's changed life as we know it. It's so forever, crazy. right? Is that how you feel? You think it's going to be like nine eleven in the sense of life before nine eleven and life after nine eleven? I mean, there is a difference. Yeah, people talk about it like that. I I hope we find some kind of you know. I hope it goes away, or we find some kind of immunization or something. But then there's the whole group of people that aren't going to take the uh, aren't going to take the vaccine uh, because they don't want to get the George Soros uh, <laughs> lateral commission tracking chip. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it do. Oh shit! Laugh, but I've got good friends that think like that. Me too, man. To accept it, and I personally don't think like that when the vaccine maybe. Five percent, but when the vaccine comes out, I want to take that motherfucker because I want to travel again. Take the vac. Look, I had a molecular biologist on the podcast last week. Okay, um, dude, that guy can re- you know really broke down the stuff for me. Okay, he really ex- from one of these new world order globalists. No, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, legitimately, it's like, dude, look. This is basically what he said. Look, Mother Nature is the sneakiest, mm-hmm. deadliest, you know, serial cl- killer on the planet. So take it seriously is what he's saying. Like, don't, don't, this isn't a joke, okay? This virus doesn't care if you're healthy, if you're sick, if you're white, if you're black, if you're old, if you're young, if you're, it, it doesn't care about anything. It will come after you and it's it can take you and he said the reason it's so serious really the reason people are so like his community he's a director of like you know a big company that works on this stuff so he's got a lot of insight it was honestly one of the best podcasts i've ever done in my entire life to be frank with you like it was awesome but you know he's breaking his it's a the the podcast is um a i don't something molecular biology i'm gonna send you a link for it okay cool Cool. His name is Jacob. Um, and anyway, he, he basically breaks it down saying like, just I'll quickly go over it. But basically the reason they consider it so serious, you know, scientists and because he's a scientist, he's like, look, the reason we think this is so serious is because of its incubation period. He said, you can have the virus for two weeks and be asymptomatic and walk around with it and hand it off to people. Or you, get, you don't get sick for a few days, so you walked around with it feeling fine and passed it off to so many people. And that's what he said worries them uh, so much. Yeah, me too. That's the scariest thing about that's, it. That's the, and he said that it also kind of works like 
the HIV virus in the sense that he said that the virus, God, I don't want to screw up all the smart shit he said, but basically like it, it has instructions and it has one single line of like what he's called RNA or DNA. And it basically tells the cell what to do. And he said, that's why this, that's why COVID is so scary because it acts just like HIV. It has a genetic instruction inside of it to tell the cell what to do. Yes. It, like that's scary. That's why you hear that in the news too, that people compare it to HIV for that reason, because yeah. it has a genetic uh, RNA strand, one single instruction that it gives the cell and other viruses don't do that. Right. Like that's when you hear people saying, Oh, it's the flu and this and that. They don't know what they're talking about. You can't compare the two. They're not even close. Like it's not even worth comparing. Yeah, no, I, 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 I've heard some of that. And on the conspiratorial side of things, I've heard people use that as the reason why they think it was created in a lab. Totally. <laughs> yeah. They don't believe it or not, but, um, but yeah, that incubation period. And uh, fuck, the other day I was, uh, I saw that, uh, that news story about that. Uh, not the aircraft carrier, but the smaller destroyer that, uh, yeah, large, it's, it's running rampant and a large part of the crew has it now and they don't know what, you know. Here's the scary thing about that story. There's a little tiny detail in there, is, which is uh, that boat had been at sea for 30 days since its last port of call before any of those sailors said, went to the sick bay and say, hey man, I've got this weird symptom. Can you give me a COVID test? So, you know, if it took them 30 days from, I think their last port of call was Honolulu uh, to start showing it, and that's creepy as fuck. That is crazy, right? That's crazy. They got tended at sea. You know, they had some boats come up alongside and transfer supplies and stuff. And maybe it could, that's equally scary too, if it can live on a box that some guy, you know, 100 feet away is, is attaching to a crane. And then that box goes into the hold and then they break the supplies down two days later. I don't know that that scared the fuck out of me. I'm with you, dude. A lot of that. Look, I'm going to be honest. I'm definitely going to send you the link to the podcast that I'm talking about with my, with, with the uh, Jacob, the molecular bio. He will actually make you feel hopeful and better about this whole thing because the podcast talks about, he knows about the 18 vaccine and treatments that are in development right now. Uh, oh, yeah. He talked about the best methods to keep yourself, clean and sanitized and prevent this stuff like his big thing is just hygiene dude wash your hands constantly and don't touch your mouth he said i think he said you know 90 percent of viruses get contracted through the mouth people touching their mouth you need some man i've got this great idea let's have someone that leads the country that maybe could get in front of the country on maybe on television or on the internet and just plainly and simply explain these things to us it would do us a lot of good right wouldn't now. it it would just do us so good right now i agree i agree man this will help you at least for me you know and a lot of people found this particular podcast very useful um, a lot of people messaged me saying wow thank you so much like this really broke down a lot of cool. simple, simple things for me to understand you know and leave you leave you feeling hopeful for how things are going to go Good, good. Yeah, because I mean, I feel pretty hopeful most of the time about it. You should. Yeah. If I obsess on the internet uh, stuff out there. It's going to be rough, no doubt about it, right? Like things are like we've been talking about. Things are changed forever. It's going to be rough, but we, we will get through this for sure. Man, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad you feel that way too, because I do. Hey, um, can I take a real quick bathroom break? Dude, you know what, John? Don't you sweat, man. We're, we've done an hour and a half. I, I think we're... Don't even sweat it, dude. We've well, we got to take bathroom breaks. We know we've we've done it. I love talking to you, man. We could just talk forever. I dude, this love is better it. than the last time, man. Because now we're old friends. I love it, dude. Dude, we're definitely gonna have to. Um, I'm I'm 100 gonna have you come over and eat some food, man. When when it's you know I, when this settles down and you feel comfortable getting out of the house and coming over, that's what we're gonna do. I love it, man. That's you know what we're gonna do. I'm looking at the list of things uh, to talk about in case we get, you know, got kind of uh, creative blocked and we hadn't hit any of them. <laughs> I can see the list. It's like 
Alien, it's a aliens, uh, NASCAR. I don't know, just I don't I love know it. mask. We, oh, those are good. That's a good list, dude. Thanks, man. Um, I'll, I'll run through them real quick. I wanted yeah. to talk about Westworld because I've been watching it lately. It hit me. Now I'm watching it with the uh, perspective that the robots are the humans, and the way they're becoming sentient by remembering their past lives is how humans uh, become sentient uh, through reincarnation. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Dude, the show's been great. It's a trip. I love um, that show. That sent me down a rabbit hole. Uh, all this gloomy shit on TV is, uh, and, and is just making me wonder if the Flintstones takes place in the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, bomb, mic drop. Oh, damn. That's kind of that's crazy that's to great. think about. Um, uh, I'm releasing a new song today uh, with uh, Krista Bell. We did this. Uh, it's like a. Tw it's like an 11 minute long disco remix of a song from our last album. And it's oh pretty, shit! I'm pretty hell, hell yeah, disco. Yeah, I'm talking t is it 12, and we cut it down from 15. So if you're interested, just get on her website or my Facebook and, and check that out. Uh, don't want to turn it into a bunch of. Um, uh, a bunch of advertisements. No, but, dude, tell us what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, man, thanks for bringing up the painting because I, I have really, I, I really think, and we talked about this earlier, but we've got this great opportunity to reinvent, you know, and uh, the noise is quieted down enough to where uh, we can try these things and not worry about what our friends are going to say, you know, totally i think at the gig that night or, or whatever it might be how the audience is gonna yeah you know, we yeah yeah man i'm really into painting i'm really honestly i have hardly touched a guitar at all since this whole thing started that's crazy that's good though probably in a lot of ways and great it's all yeah. i do and so um yeah it's been wonderful to just just not have to touch it and then maybe you know i might spend hours on the floor playing the synthesizer or you know doing uh painting or whatever so i've really been enjoying that no that's awesome man god i wish i could say i'm doing some cool stuff like that like i'm not at all of, uh, what you're doing right now i don't know I, yeah i guess that i guess i am cooking a lot here at the house like i'm making sauces and and putting stuff in for later like i'm actually prepping too much food you know it's just me so i'm just prepping too much food because i'm getting bored right so i'm just trying to find things to do so i just start overcooking <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. i'm just like cooking for four people yeah how many people are you quarantined with just just myself man my my ex-wife who we got back together Okay, so, you know, yay to us, but she's still quarantined up in New York. So until that's done, she'll come to Austin. So I'm alone until she gets here, maybe a couple weeks. Wow. She'll be here. So, yeah, I've been alone for, I have not touched another human being mm -hmm. since March 16th. Holy shit. How freaking weird is that? Super weird, dog. Like. I don't like it, to be honest with you. I need a uh, physical touch. Like I need uh that's just the type of person I am. Like I I'm, I'm going nuts. My dogs are tired of me. They're sick of me rubbing up on them and, and just spooning them. And you know, they're just like, leave me alone, daddy. Like <laughs> I know they're tired of me, but that's what I miss the most, man. Just that, that human interaction. I'm Latin dog. Like I need, I necesito tocar a gente, you know, like I got to touch people. I get it, man. I totally get it. I, I, I snuck a hug uh, maybe six weeks ago from Beautiful. somebody we were, like leaving. We met, you know, socially distanced in a park. And it was like, <laughs> you a hug. I want you to hug me. I got, <laughs> you know, we hugged for like two seconds and then we broke apart. And, and it was like, did we just poison each other forever? <laughs> Oh, no, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I need a whole fucking society going through all this at the same time. It's wild. 
Never in a million years. Right. Nobody would have ever in a million years guessed something like this. So, yeah, it's completely unprecedented. I, you know, God, it's just crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. It's at first it really it's kind of worn down. It's kind of changed for me now, but it felt like a really shitty, boring, slow ass sci fi movie. Like not, yeah, not cars are blowing up and something's going with the vaccine and and machine guns going off and you know fighting for food. It's just like a shitty one, super slow, super boring. I agree. Just like that's a great way to look at it, like a shitty sci-fi movie. <laughs> it's exactly what it was. Yeah, that's it, man. It's um unprecedented time we're all trying to adapt the best way we can and come out on top take advantage of the opportunities my thing i've been telling people is help 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 if you can if you have an opportunity to help somebody around you a neighbor whatever any way that you can give back to the community right now it's needed more than ever i, I get on a daily grind you know day-to-day -day grind it's hard to give back and you got you know three jobs you're doing that whatever you're doing i get it it's hard but right now people need us you know if you're if you're available to help people need it dude just checking in with your friends i've got a little that helps too yep anything man have you heard that phrase quarantine <laughs> no uh, eight or nine people 10 people 15 ish that are close to me and and we all check you know we we check in just send a message at mental health right making sure you good you know yeah. Some people just once a week, you know, some people every day, you know, there's good, man. I'm glad you're a very kind, a generous person. So it doesn't surprise me at all that you would do that. Sometimes. <laughs> well, that's all of us, right? We can't, we're not all perfect. Hey, even mother Teresa had problems. So no, I've got a couple of people in my life, um, uh, that, uh, I can tell them anything, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool to be checking in with them. But you're going through the same experience, man, solo. Yeah. And yeah. That's in a couple of weeks, huh? It's a, it's, you know, look, again, I'm I'm blessed. I'm grateful for the fact that one, I was used to working at home. Yeah. Two, two I'm okay with being alone. Yes. And three, I've always sort of had a strong mental state about myself for the most part I, I have my moments right i can get depressed and i can get whatever but i'm i'm pretty good about that you know yeah i mean walking the camino yeah man exactly i've i've just learned over time with all my travels of being alone and being your own thing so i get used to i'm okay with that i can prop myself up but I realize how hard it is and for other people. So that's my thing. I'm just always reaching out to other people if they're alone, the people that are alone and making sure they're okay. My mom's quarantined alone. So I'm constantly checking in with her, you know, making sure she's okay. And again, anybody that's alone, that's who I'm most concerned about. You know, how you, how you holding up, you know, how you doing? How, if you got a family and you're this and that, I'm probably not checking up on you that much because you at least have a family. I'm not saying you're not struggling. Yeah. But, you know, you at least have people to, we say in Spanish, desahogarte, get the things off your chest you need to, right? In, if you're alone, you might not have that. So that, that's my thing. True, man. Um, yeah, because, I mean, we talked about, uh, we were talking about the good of isolation, you know, and for people that can be loners in a positive way. But, uh how about the, the not so good, you know, the people that not everybody's cut out for being locked up in a house. Uh, Absolutely. In the room, you know? If it's, if I'm struggling a little bit with it and I'm good at this, then I can't imagine somebody who's not good at it, what they're going through. Exactly. Exactly. So I get it. Yeah. And I get everyone's frustration, right. To want to get back out, get to work. I get it. Like I'm, I get it. I get it. I get it. I am really sad that it's become uh, like a political football and like that defines which side of these two extremes you can be on. And to the truth with everything, it's in the middle, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I'm hoping, uh, you know, we can just 
test the waters, you know, with Texas. Hopefully, if it gets out of control, we can step back, you know. Maybe it won't. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a gloom and doomer. Yeah, it's hard for me to think like that, too. Um, because I've just realized through my life, a lot of the state you're in is what you decide. So yeah. if you decide to think positive, not to say that outside forces and empirical things can't uh, uh, definitely affect who you are and how you feel, but a lot of it is just telling yourself to think positively and follow through on things. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. I hate to say, I don't know, at least for me and my experience, that's that's been the case. You know, think positive, think it through, see it in front of you see the goal see the whatever you're trying to get right you and it happens i don't know you're a visualizer kind I'm of a guy visual, I'm a, i am a hundred percent do you approach cooking that way you must yes yes i'm visual about everything i learn visually the best i everything yeah yeah, yeah man let's hope for a good outcome yes it's gonna happen i think so too i really do it's gonna happen man it's gonna happen because we're one we're just uh you know strong people man right humanity is just strong as fuck we've been through a lot so there's no way this is gonna take us out it's just there's no way it's just how we adapt and how we move forward and uh, you know the good good things we take about it and you know again if you have an ability to help right now that's what i feel people should be doing if you're in a position to help people that's what you should be doing during this time I'm going to keep that in mind, man, because, uh, you know, it's like you can always you can always do a little bit more. You know? Absolutely. And look, nobody's asking, give up your whole lot, but just to, like you're doing, right? A phone call here to somebody, a, a quick text message to this other person, um, you know, five bucks to this guy, uh, you know, five dollars over here. Yeah. Whatever. You know, it, it helps. All the little things help right now. Yeah, dude. Some some guy, you know, uh, with Bob, I play at the Saxon every Monday. And uh, there's a group of, uh, you know, uh, diehards that go every Monday to the Saxon. And this guy texted me the other day and uh, he said, or he messaged me, he said, uh, since I can't go there and usually when I go, I pay the cover and I buy this much drink. So I'm figuring I, I pay about this much money. And so um, what I'm going to do is every Monday I'm going to give uh, this amount to every one of you guys. And I don't want to out him. It's just, it's dude. It's a, it's a, it's a, that's awesome. Big amount, you know, but, um, Bob has some, you, you guys have some really loyal fans, man. Right. The, that are amazing. They really are amazing people. The way he laid it out, it really touched me. He's just like every Monday, instead of, you know, what I normally would have spent to the sacks and I'm going to break that down and send a little piece to every one of you guys. And it, it, it hit me, you know, it that's really, awesome. That's awesome, man. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Shout out to, to, to y'all's fans. Yeah. 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 Cause I know, I know everybody's missing it. I miss it too. It's wild. Yeah, man. It's hey. again, we're opening. Texas is right. We're on the forefront of, of leading the opening in a lot of ways. Um, I think the country is looking at what we're doing here in Texas and Georgia. Better do it right. We better do it right. Yeah. Um, fuck. It scares the shit out of me, right? I mean, in a sense, there is a, I mean, God, that when you see people say, you know, we just got to open up, we got to get the economy going, and we're just going to have to take the hit, which, uh, you know, sounds great and it sounds very adult until someone you know died. Exactly. It some you know someone that i i know has died from it yeah i know uh people that have passed away from it as well it's mind-blowing yeah it's my it's what it's when you realize this shit is serious exactly. people i know are dying from it and people i know are sick from it right like it's yeah. serious you know um it's yeah it's no joke dude it's it's, it's no joke and i'm not i'm not slamming anybody for their political or cultural beliefs but if all you see about it is on TV and you live in, you know, maybe, a, you know, a smaller community, you know, uh, not Austin, not New York, it's probably really hard to 
you wrap your head around it. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. And then it deserves all this, you know. And that's a good point. I yeah. just, I, I hope, uh, I hope people don't have to take it seriously through that route, losing. Sure. The Dude, I mean, the sky's the limit. It could get so fucking bad. Absolutely. Um, look, the. I think for me, the key is, you know, there's two ways to approach this lockdown virus quarantine, this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. You can think only about yourself. Right. Or you can think about the community. Mm -hmm. There's only two ways to think about it. So you, for me, I'm seeing how people think right now. I mean, I can, you know, are you my rights my rights very selfish people in my opinion that are just saying that my 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 me 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 okay great but hello we live in a community driven society so we're we're not we're all going to get through this together so Dude. it's about thinking about the community i mean it's that simple again i don't wear a mask for me i wear it for you so it's that it's that mentality right now basically you're, you're either thinking selfishly or you're thinking about the community that's it it's the social contract you enter when you become a citizen you know i mean you can take it all the way back two thousand years to rome it's like this set of rules i mean i don't honestly i don't see it any different from uh not running a stop sign we've got to stop at stop signs i love my freedom i would love to just fucking drive seven miles an hour through school zones right <laughs> But if you do that, people die, you end up in jail, you know, the consequences. And, and yeah, I'm with you, man. I take, I wear a mask, not for myself, but because there's someone I, and I might not even know them. I might know, not, might not know it even happened, but I would hate to think that someone got this disease because I didn't wear a mask at HEB and I coughed when I grabbed the cereal and then they died and maybe they're 80 years old. I mean, I, yeah, wear a goddamn mask. Totally. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I agree. Again, the mask is for me. So if you're saying I'm not wearing a mask, you're basically saying fuck you to me is how I look at it. In a lot of ways, that's how it is. Cause again, if all you're doing is screaming my rights, my rights are being taken away. God, you are so selfish in my opinion. All you're thinking about is your rights. What rights? What are you talking about? Like we won't even, there'll be nobody alive to have rights. Like, what does it matter? There's not going to be rights if, you know, if, if you're dead. <laughs> it's like, you have to fucking talk to your grandmother over an iPad while she dies in ICU. I mean, it's, a, what, it's such a weird uh, hill to die on, in my opinion. It's such a weird hill to get up on. My rights, what rights? What are you... Yeah. literally saying a mask to protect i think honestly the ba the way we get people to wear masks is tell them don't wear a mask then they're gonna do the opposite that's all that's happening yeah. if the government tells them to do so they're gonna literally do the opposite so if we just start telling people don't wear a mask it would be un-american to wear a mask then you'd be people seeing wearing a mask going yeah fuck the government i guarantee you i mean it's it's yeah. crazy as that sounds it's uh, no, it's such a yeah. I don't know. I'm not, but I'm not down for mass shaming anybody either. If I'm out and about, um, you know, I'm just gonna be maybe stay a little bit away. I mean, eventually I'm gonna have to start going out without a mask too. So fuck. I, don't know. I know. I know. Sooner or later, we're just gonna have to do what we do and yeah, go normal. So I don't know. yeah, sometimes I have not worn the mask. Yeah. Uh, Me know, too. Like, I'm not perfect. Well, that's, that's the thing. The truth is somewhere in the middle. You know, it's like if you're at a park at 10 o'clock at night and there you're seeing two people, you know, you don't have to fucking wear a mask. I mean, I agree. Sensible. I agree. Yep. I agree. Well, look, John, well, you, Oh, you take me outside. Take you outside for a second, dude. Spring has sprung. Look at that grass. Oh yeah. It's beautiful weather now oh dude i like your patio thanks man it's uh pretty it's pretty old timey it's pretty janky that's how my house is. you saw it when you came over right like just old school i like your place a lot dude i really like the studio you know, the way you had everything set up the mics and you know yeah, it wasn't bad 
uh, yeah, that got a whole new setup. I moved it inside out of the garage. Um, in fact, that's the fun, that's the first thing Bob said to me when he came to the new studio to shoot. I was like, well, you're not in your garage anymore, right? Like, there you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, you had to see all that. You know, he's like, it was so hot in your garage. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, man. He was. Garage? Is that what I saw? Yeah. Yeah. You were in my garage too. I didn't put, well, maybe it was time of year. Anyway, I thought you had shit together. No, hey, for sure. Um, it, it was funny. It was just funny. Uh, it was, it was definitely hot the day Bob came though. Oh, look at this kitty. Yeah, I'm going to show you my little quarantine, my quarantine buddy. Hey, <laughs> root beer. And, but his uh, name's Root Beer. Yeah. <laughs> that head is that old chunky head. I love it. I Sweet. love it, man. Yeah. yeah, he's a he's a stray that's been coming around my cul-de-sac for about a year, and uh, we started feeding him, and uh, he's been a, a source of comfort for me through these. Tr- a hundred percent dude yeah my dogs my dogs have have gotten me through it all it's it, i'm annoying like i was telling you earlier i'm annoying them like I, i'm you know that one it was kind of it was a medium sized kind of black and whitish is that am i thinking about the same one it was uh yeah a while it was yeah. really to see a, a stranger come over yes that's uh that's rocket yeah um yeah they're it's it, it, honestly uh I, I don't know um what i would do without them to be honest with you right now with both of them yeah. they're, they're providing a lot of comfort and i'm basically talking to them like they're human i i already talked to my dogs before but bro now i really talk to them that thing. you yeah. know it's like in-depth you know <laughs> conversations i'm trying to have i think when it I'll know I've gone crazy when I hear them talk back to me. So <laughs> it's like, yep, yep. I'm losing it, but whatever. Um, well, look, John, thank you so much, man. I know you got to go to the bathroom. I actually have to go fucking piss too. So um, we've been talking for two hours. Wow. What a great podcast, dude. Got it. I know. I know. Right. Two hours. Yeah. <laughs> but it's been great, man. It happened the same time last time. It just flies by, right? Man, thanks so much for asking me to do this today, man. It's I, I really enjoy talking to you. It's great to see you. I mean, I feel like we just hung out. Uh, right. It does feel that way. That's crazy how time. Yeah, that's crazy that way that is. And I mean that, dude. As soon as this settles down or whatever, I definitely want you to come over to the pad and I'll I'll make us something super special. You tell me what you like to eat and I'll fucking make it from scratch. Okay. I I'm just going to guess that you make a mind-blowing paella i make a great paella oh my god okay. because i know about el socrote which is the bottom okay. part that gets all uh, hard on the rice yeah absolutely yeah, yeah we'll do a paella yeah if you're up to it i mean yeah paella is easy dog that's easy yeah. easy okay. peasy it's just time paella is all about time one of those dishes like mole it's it's a whole day thing huh? yeah exactly you have to when you're in spain and you order paella you actually have to order it 24 hours ahead at most restaurants jesus christ so you can't just you can't just walk into a restaurant and go i'll have paella you know i kind of wondered about that because it I is hard know. to find a paella in spain sometimes yeah in the moment it's really hard unless you showed up at a certain hour where they are known to serve paellas and you get a serving of it does that make yeah. sense that that happens but if you want, yeah, if you want a proper paella that you get in the table for your you know, party of four, it's always a day ahead. You, or you call the restaurant, let them know, you know, one paella for tomorrow. It's a social event. It's a social event. Totally. Wow. We'll do a paella, dog. I would love to do a paella. That would be fantastic. Anything you feel like cooking. I, oh, agree. I think that would be great. Well, look, John, say hi to uh, Root Beer for me. I sure will. And... Uh, <laughs> There he is. Hey, root beer. All right, root beer. Be good, homie. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, man. Hey, Patrick, take care, man. All right, you too, brother. Enjoy the rest of your say, uh, day and be safe. Stay clean. Wash those hands. Thank you. You too, man. All Thanks. right, brother. That's great. Take Absolutely. Care. Talk soon. Bye bye. All right. I really hope you enjoyed that podcast as much as I did with John. Um, if you have any questions for me, 
please feel free to email the podcast at patrick at texasrealfood.com. Um, and don't forget, you can check us out on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you know, all the different places you can get podcasts, you'll, you'll find us on there. Or you can just go to our website, go to the Lone Star Plate dot com and uh you can find everything you need there all the episodes um and you can check us out on youtube if you want to watch it you know we video these now you know on a little webcam here and do the zoom stuff and um you know so if you feel like doing it that way go to the texas real food youtube channel and you can find it there uh make sure to follow uh texas real food as well on instagram and facebook subscribe um and if you you know are so inclined please leave us a review anywhere you can um you know follow us on spotify or leave a review on apple podcast uh that would really help us out uh as well so if you support you know what we're trying to do here so thanks again for listening really do appreciate it um without you guys we we'll, you know what's the point of doing this um so if you have any suggestions on how we can make the show better please let us know all right thanks again be safe out there wash your hands <laughs>